In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of the user interface. Before I move forward, I'd like to point out that there are different editions or flavors of the software that might make your screen look just a little bit different than mine. Revit's basically divided up into architecture, structure, and MEP. Those are offered all separately, or they can all be combined together into just what's called Revit. And that's what I'm working in. So I have all three areas available. Uh, if you're working in a slightly different version, um, this information still holds true and, and the differences are really minor at this point. Once you have the software initialized, you'll come to a welcome screen. And it's really basically divided up into two sections. We have the project section at the top and then families down below. This illustrates the two uh, main ways of working in Revit and ways we're thinking about it. So in other pieces of software like AutoCAD, for example, you work in drawings. And each time you want to open something up, you'll be opening up a new drawing. In Revit, it's a project. They're not just individual views or drawings or schedules. It's all contained under, you know, in one envelope, in one large project. So that's the terminology that we're going to be using. At the bottom, we have families, and that's kind of the, the subcategory in Revit where we can make things like furniture, light fixtures, windows, doors, all of that type of thing, all of the components that are going into our projects, into our, our buildings. Right now, I'm just going to be focusing on the projects portion up at the top. If we look up here, you'll see that you can, first of all, click on one of these four icons and that will open up one of these recently used projects. So uh, any one of these I could click on and it would open up that, that project, this office building or church, for example. If I don't want to use one of those, I can come over and either go to open and find a file that way, new and start from scratch, or I could click on one of these available templates. The templates are very useful and they basically allow you to uh, you know, open up a certain set of parameters so that your file has certain views and units and all of that ready to go so that you don't have to basically reinvent the wheel each time. You can also um, choose to go up to the blue R, the application button, hit the drop down and open up new or existing uh, projects that way as well. But I'm just going to stick with using the welcome screen right at this time. So I'm just going to click on the architectural template and open it up that way. After clicking on architectural template, Revit has opened up a blank project for me based on that template um, so that I can begin creating my project. I would now like to go through the basic screen parts so that the terminology and the areas that you go are, are clear. In the upper left hand corner, as I just mentioned, we have the blue R for Revit, and that's the application button. So it has some of the same things that we just saw on the welcome screen, including creating new projects or families. We can open up existing projects, families, components. You'll see there's a lot of options in here. We can save or save as. We can export our Revit projects out into CAD formats or other types of files. Um, we have suite workflows. We can publish our Revit file. We can print and so on. So there's a lot available to us just in the application button. On the right side of the application uh, menu, we'll see that we can either look at recent documents or if I toggle this little button right here, I can look at open documents that I have. So under recent documents, the top four are the four icons basically that I had available to me on the welcome screen. So those, those four are the most recently used, that's why they were there. And then I have a few additional ones as I move my way down. If there's any particular project or projects that you're going to be coming back to time and time again and you don't want those to fall off your list as you create and open more projects, you can choose to activate these little pins 
next to those projects. And even as you move forward, create new ones and save and move on, these projects will stay there. You can always unpin them and they will eventually fall off this list. It's not as if they disappear completely, they just become a little bit harder to find and you have to go into open and search through your files. The open documents is a really handy feature because um, just as you can in other software, you can have multiple projects open. So there might be a big list here of different projects that you have active that you want to be able to come in and activate because it can be a little bit tricky. I only have one project open right now, so this list isn't very interesting, but it could certainly be full of more projects. Okay, so I'll just click that back to recent. And then for now, I'm just going to click out of there to let that shrink away. Next to the blue R, the application button, we have the QAT, the Quick Access Toolbar. So uh, this is where you can add or remove different tools that you use all the time. And it comes stocked with opening, saving, undo, redo, some pretty common ones. But we can actually add or remove to that if we'd like to. That's a really handy uh, toolbar that I'll come back to in a minute that some people use quite a bit to speed up their workflow. That's the QAT. In the middle here we have the project name, okay, and then to the right we have the uh, info center. Okay, so the info center where is where you can go on the internet to look for content, you can go for help, and that type of thing. Below the thin strip that's going across the top, we have the ribbon. The ribbon, ribbon is kind of the, the heart and soul of Revit in a lot of ways. This is where you're going to find all of the basic tools that you're going to be using to create your building. The first tab here on the left is the architecture tab, and that's where you find all of your building components. We find walls, doors, windows. We can put a roof on. We can put in the ceilings, the floors. We can add circulation elements. We can add rooms, openings, and even set work planes. So this is going to be one of our most heavily used tabs on the ribbon. Next to that we have structure for our structural elements. We have systems for the MEP, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. There's an insert tab where we can come to um, link or import Revit projects, AutoCAD files, images, and things of that sort, as well as load family members seen right here, and this includes bringing in different things that are not generically installed with the project. So, um, you know, windows, doors, um, pieces of furniture, lighting, and so on. The annotate tab will allow us to dimension, add text and tags, things like that. We have the analyze tab to, in fact, analyze our model. Massing in site to create masses or a you know, site for our building, a topo surface, we can add trees and parking lots and things of that nature. The Collaborate tab is what is heavily used in a collaborative environment, in an office environment, where you are in fact synchronizing a live model with other people in your office. We have the View tab, which will allow us to create views of our project, of our model, including two-dimensional and three-dimensional views. We can render from this tab, and we can also switch our windows, which are not so much about our project, but about the various projects we may in fact have open in Revit. We have the Manage tab, which allows us to manage our units, materials, um, and a whole variety of project settings. And then finally we have the Modify tab, which is a very highly used tab in Revit. This allows us to modify individual items, um, our, you know, our, our building as a whole, we can align things, we can cut geometry, we can paint, do all sorts of wonderful things here on the Modify tab. Within each tab on the ribbon, we have panels. So if I make my way back to the architecture tab, you'll see that there is a build panel, a circulation panel, a model panel. So within each tab, and then within each panel on the tab, we have tools. So we can add walls, doors, windows, and so on. So the commands are basically grouped by function, panels, under tabs, with tools. 
Below and to the left of the ribbon, we have two very important menus here, or palettes really. We have the Properties palette and the Project Browser. So the Properties palette will tell us a great deal of information about whatever we happen to have selected. So right now I'm working in a blank project. I have no particular item selected, so it's telling me about my view. So the Properties palette will always be telling you something. So right now, just as an example, it's showing me that I have a floor plan view active, that it's in an eighth inch scale, and so on. So it's always giving you information. Below the Properties palette, I have the Project Browser. The Project Browser is somewhat like a table of contents of your project, and it lists very nicely all of your various views, and it shows me legends and schedules and sheets. So everything about my project is available here in the Project Browser. To switch between one view to another, all I do is come into the Project Browser, double click on a view and it will activate. Since I don't have any particular model open, you don't really see a big change, but uh, that's how we switch views. We know that any given view is active when it's bold. Simply clicking on a view and highlighting it with that blue box doesn't change it. The active view is the bold view. If I want to change it, I need to double click on it. In the middle of the screen, we have our drawing area. Right now mine is empty, and that will be you know, populated uh, when I put in walls and roofs and things like that. So right now it's blank, except for these four uh, boxes. These are our elevation markers, and they're going to be giving us our basic north, south, east, west elevations. If I scroll down in my project browser on the left, you'll see that those are listed here. So those are coming in automatically with my generic architectural template project. Okay, so these are automatic, and that's what those little markers are indicating. Should you delete one by accident, it's not a big deal. We can always go to the View tab and add one, um, but it's probably a good idea to leave those, especially when you're first starting. At the bottom of the drawing window, we have the View Control Bar right here, and this allows us to change a whole variety about you know what we're looking at, including the scale, um, the detail level, if we have the sun on, if we have items hidden, all sorts of things like that in the view control bar right here. We also have the navigation bar off to the right, which will allow us to zoom in and out and pan to do that types of things, although there's you know a variety of ways of doing that. And then finally at the bottom we have the status bar and different selection options and that type of thing down at the bottom of the screen. So that's a very quick and brief description of Revit's user interface and the different terminology that we're going to be using as we move forward.